Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to diagnose different kinds of genital ulcers and ways to treat them. Genital ulcers can be differentiated from each other based on appearance, pain, lymph node status, and other features. By the end of this video, you'll be in a position to fill this table by yourself. I'll also share some mnemonics that I use in order to remember them. Like all my other videos, we learn this topic by solving questions. If you're interested in medical videos, quizzes, Q&A sessions with doctors, and many other things related to medicine, do subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Instagram. Question number one. Which of the following is incorrect about primary syphilis? Option A, chancre. Option B, painful lymphadenopathy. Option C, painless ulcer. Option D, none of the above. The answer to this question is painful lymphadenopathy. Chancre is a well-circumscribed lesion. It is seen in patients with primary syphilis. It is a painless ulcer. Bilateral lymphadenopathy would also be seen in these patients. The lymph nodes are painless as well. Since there is no pain associated with primary syphilis, there's a high chance of it going undiagnosed at this stage. The chancre has a lot of treponema pallidum, which is the bacteria that causes syphilis. Hence, this lesion is highly infectious. It can be treated by penicillin. Question number 2. A 30-year-old man with primary syphilis is allergic to penicillin. Which of the following is the best treatment option for this patient? Option A, amoxicillin. Option B, doxycycline. Option C, desensitization and then treatment with penicillin. If someone is allergic to penicillin, there are two options available. One is doxycycline and two is desensitizing the patient to penicillin and then treating them with the same drug. Doxycycline is a cheaper alternative and is more commonly used. Desensitization can be done in pregnant women. This is because doxycycline is teratogenic and is hence contraindicated during pregnancy. Desensitization is also done in patients with penicillin allergy who have syphilis involving the central nervous system. If a patient with penicillin allergy has tertiary syphilis, ceftriaxone is the drug of choice. Amoxicillin is an amino penicillin, so it cannot be used in our patient. Question number 3. Painless genital ulcer with painful lymphadenopathy is likely to be caused by Option A. Treponema pallidum Option B. Chlamydia trachomatis Option C. Klebsiella granulomatis the answer to this question is chlamydia trachomatis. Painless ulcer along with painful lymphadenopathy is seen in lymphogranuloma venarium. This is caused by chlamydia trachomatis. The ulcer is shallow. The painless ulcer can progress to painful lymphadenopathy. The lymph nodes can come together to form buboes. Inclusion bodies within the cytoplasm can be seen in this lesion. Lymphogranuloma venarium is treated with doxycycline. Question number 4. Do novin bodies are seen in Option A. Lymphogranuloma venarium Option B. Granuloma inguinale The answer to this question is granuloma inguinale. It is also known as donovanosis. It is caused by Klebsiella granulomatis. What's unique about this is that the ulcer is painless and there is no lymphadenopathy. Here's how I remember it. Do no vanosis has no lymphadenopathy. Also, granuloma inguinale has no inguinal lymphadenopathy. The base of these ulcers might have granulation tissues. Denovin bodies are gram-negative intracytoplasmic cysts that are seen in the lesion. Granuloma inguinale is treated with doxycycline. Now that we've dealt with all the painless ulcers, let's move on to the painful genital ulcers. Question number 5. Shallow, painful genital ulcer with an erythematous base is likely to be caused by Option A. Herpes simplex virus Option B. Haemophilus ducri 
The answer to this question is herpes simplex virus. Both herpes simplex virus and Haemophilus ducri can cause painful ulcers. The main difference is the appearance. Herpes simplex virus can cause genital herpes which is characterized by a group of ulcers with a shallow red base. Haemophilus ducri can cause painful ulcers along with painful lymphadenopathy. The ulcers are called chancroid. A common way to remember this is that Haemophilus causes so much pain that you do cry. These ulcers are deep with a grayish base. Genital herpes has mild lymphadenopathy while chancroid is characterized by severe lymphadenopathy with pus. Cowdry type A bodies and multinucleated giant cells can be seen on biopsy of the ulcer in genital herpes. In the lesion caused by Haemophilus ducri, the bacteria are seen in clumps within the chancroid. Genital herpes is treated with acyclovir and azithromycin can be used to treat chancroid. Question number 6. A patient experiences fever, chills and myalgia a few hours after being treated for a painless genital ulcer. How could this have been prevented? Option A. Checking for allergies before treating the patient. Option B. NSAIDs. Option C. Prednisone. The answer to this question is prednisone. This patient was likely treated for syphilis. When penicillin is given, it will break the bacteria down. Due to the rapid lysis of the bacteria, endotoxin is released. These endotoxins can cause symptoms of fever and myalgia. This is known as jarish herxheimer reaction. It takes place in people regardless of allergies. Also, allergic reactions are likely to take place sooner and not hours later. This condition is managed with NSAIDs and IV fluids. It can be prevented by providing prednisone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss even a single update. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.